I'm using sort of scrunched up plastic. This is a great way to get started, especially if you're new to acrylic painting. I put some blobs of sort of violet blue and some of the buff titanium on to the canvas where the path is. And I'm just tapping with the plastic bag and sort of blending the colours like that rather than sort of worrying about sort of textures and things like this. This creates texture. It also blends the paint and it is very, very messy. So you may want to wear some gloves if you don't like paint getting on your hands. I'm just squeezing out a little bit of pale pink and some more of the buff titanium and I'm just tapping away to create some lighter areas on the path as well onto the damp paint underneath. I'm squeezing out now or trying to. These are Amsterdam acrylics. I bought a big set of 72 so you get all sorts of different colours which is great when you're doing something like this. You can just pick out all the different yellows and greens etc. So I've got a fresh piece of plastic. I, actually it's the same piece. I've just rolled it up into a different area so I've got a fresh um, bit there where I'm just tapping in some of this yellow here, nice bright primary yellow but any yellow will do and it's so much fun here because it really does loosen you up applying this acrylic paint. So I'm applying a little bit more of that buff titanium. You can use white if you want to as well with a light sort of green. I'm just sort of squeezing it out. Not all tidily like some people do on YouTube. I'm a bit of a splodger. So I'm just splodging it out here and there just where I can see sort of lighter green grasses and bushes. And I'm just tapping again using a fresh bit of the plastic, um, revolving it around and tapping and blending as I go. So I've got some light and mid-tone colours. This is a, a darker blue. You could use a Prussian blue. And I'm just tapping this, or a dark green actually, but I'm just tapping this now, blending it into this light and mid-green here. Immediately it gives these dark tonal values and it starts to give a little bit of depth to the painting. It's quite an abstract way of starting, but especially if you're a beginner, it's a nice way of just sort of applying the paint. It takes the pressure off. So I've squeezed out a little bit of cadmium yellow here. I'm scrunching up my bit of plastic and um, just tapping in and blending in this yellow here um, onto the damp paint. So blending the paint that's already on the surface there to get some sort of other sort of tonal values and different colours of bushes and things like that. So it's quite nice. It is, as I say, very messy. As you can see there from my fingertips there. I haven't speeded this up. I do sort of tap that fast. It's just to really get everything blending. And sometimes um, I'm standing up painting here. Um, sometimes it's quite nice to stand up because it gets you to be really relaxed and sort of take more chances and make bigger marks and things like that. So I definitely recommend it, even every now and again, if you can't stand up for too long. As you saw there, I painted um, and tapped in some darker marks as well there using the Prussian blue. The painting has dried now and I'm just sketching in the path again. I lost it a little bit, of course, because of the tapping with a plastic bag. It's not, it's not very delicate, really. Really. It's quite sort of loose style of painting and the beauty of acrylics is you can sort of redraw your painting and get some of that sort of detail back again. So I'm actually drawing in the girl on the right here using this small round synthetic brush with some of the buff titanium. Um, just use a colour that you can see. The reason why I didn't go any darker is because sometimes when you've got a dark outline you're always forever trying to cover it up and this way I felt with a light outline I could disguise it better because it's almost the colour of the path. So I started off with the skirt, kept keeping it really simple here. Even if you're a beginner, you can sort of break down the drawing. And I've sort of drawn the top part of the dress with the sort of cuff sleeves there and now just painting in the left arm and now painting in the right arm, just really trying to look at the shapes and how they relate to one another, how the arm is where the sleeve is and just take your time. The thing is, if it doesn't look right, just wet it, wipe it off, have another go um, and it will be absolutely fine. I'm just drawing in the legs now, keeping it really simple. I did say to my students, the trickiest part are the shoes, especially when the foot is lifted off the ground, sort of the sole of the shoe. Just draw what you see rather than sort of drawing from your imagination. It makes it easier. So um, as you can see there, the left foot is the sole of the shoe. I've just kept a really simple outline and the right foot is the back 
of those trainers. Now, I'm actually going to change the shoes to make it a little bit more like they're off to a party or something or a special occasion. So I'm actually going to give them white socks, black shoes, which I thought would look really nice. I'm just sketching in the hat now. Now, you don't have to do the hat in the photograph. You could actually do a lovely sort of straw hat on this girl here. And that's the beauty of using a photograph like this. You can change things. You can change the colour of the hair, the length of the hair, the pattern of the dress, you know, um, whether it's uh, a dress at the knees, you know, longer dress. Um, that's what I like. I love this sort of creativity. You know, you can make it your own. You can change the colour of the flowers in the bushes there as well. So I'm actually sketching in now with the paint and the little brush, the girl on the left. I'm actually starting with her sleeve this time. I'm just really gauging the distance between the two girls so they don't sort of crash into each other and uh, sort of painting her arm as it's raised slightly there. I just thought it'd be really useful to talk through my thought processes as I'm sketching in um, this girl on the left here as well. And so just sort of literally um, for the dress there, I've kept it really, really simple and just drawing literally two lines for the left leg and look like they're sort of narrowing at the bottom and the same for the right leg there. So you can see keeping it really, really simple. And I'm drawing in the left uh, shoe and the right shoe as well. Um, again, the shapes are really simple drawing in the sort of puff sleeves here on the left hand side exaggerating it a little bit and then sketching in a really simple arm don't worry about arms or feet or anything like that keep it sort of very simple almost geometric shapes you can paint in the details later you just want a rough outline so I'm just sort of sketching a little bit of this girl's hair here before I start sort of painting in the hat keeping it again simple the shape simple using this little synthetic brush you can see they're just making little marks and adjusting things as well as i said earlier you can always wet the acrylic paint and make adjustments lift off so i think i'll leave the drawing there for the girls now i'm just going to adjust the path to the left here I lost a little bit of the shape, so I'm just adjusting there, knowing that I can just paint over the top of that later on. And that's what makes me relaxed, actually, when I'm painting in acrylics, because I know I can just keep changing things, putting things in, painting things out. It's got a great flexibility. So I'm just using a little bit of this buff titanium painting with my flat brush now. It's a a little half inch flat brush painting wet on dry really just a flat simple shape as you can see there the flat brush I haven't got very much control with at all and because I'm painting on quite a bumpy surface now because I have sort of printed all of that background color in I, it enables me to be quite loose and not worry too much I've squeezed out a little bit of yellow and I'm basically colouring in, painting in this yellow hat here, keeping everything really simple. I've mixed up some violet and yellow here and a touch of the buff titanium. I'm just blocking in the straw hat and I'm using that colour with a touch more violet for the um, arms and back of the legs and the hands so that um, you've got sort of quite a neutral skin tone here because it might be a little bit in shadow. I will paint a lighter skin tone as well where the light hits um, the skin there but I'll paint that on later but I'm as you can see I'm just blocking things in I'm actually using the skin tone here to get rid of some of that green on the part on the path that sort of crept over a little bit and now adding a little bit of blue with a touch of the buff to tame just to cool things down a bit and scrub a little bit what I love is the girl on the left her dress has got some green in there it's got some path color um, so it's quite interesting, but just sort of scumbling and blocking now with this sort of neutral colour, which is a blue touch of violet, touch of yellow with some of the buff titanium. So it's a really quite creamy, beigey, bluey colour, something that doesn't come forward too much. Path colour. I think they should have a tube of paint called path colour or road colour. It would be it would actually save me and I know a lot of my students a lot of trouble. So what I'm doing now is just painting in some shadow colour here using some red, squeeze out some red and violet with a little bit of yellow. If you've got yellow ochre it'll be even better. 
and it's just using the little small synthetic brush again just painting in sort of dark tonal values around the edge of the arm there and it's quite useful having the photograph to see where the darks are and don't be afraid of the dark because when you paint the light in it brings it all to life it makes it look more 3d so just try and sort of half close your eyes sometimes just to sort of cut out all the other little mid-tones just to see the darks and the lights so as you can see I'm just painting the back of the leg here as well I've caught a bit of white there from the um, dress but not to worry and just painting the darks there the paint's still damp so I'm blending a little bit as well so once all my mid and dark tones are painted in on the flesh colors I'm mixing up a little bit of violet here with a touch of the buff titanium actually just to kind of make it a little bit softer and a bit lighter and I'm painting this wet on dry with my flat brush again just blocking in the colors not worrying too much I'm even going to paint over the, where her hair is as well um, I'll worry about that later and you, as you can see now the painting is starting to come to life you know that background which was very very loose is starting to make a little bit more sense now because you've got the two girls sort of walking along there um, still sort of lots of work to do but this is how I like to build up a painting I like to sort of get very sort of rough outlines in and just gently start to build up so what I've got here is a very grey sort of blue colour it's basically the shadow colours that I'm painting here so I've mixed up a little bit of blue touch of violet and a little bit well basically there's a lot of other colours underneath there but you could use a bit of the buff titanium and if it still looks a bit too bright add a little bit of yellow yellow and violet really do neutralize one another they may look a bit too brown that's where the blue comes in and a touch of the buff titanium to make it a little bit subtle and just sort of blend this in this is wet on dry now with this little um, synthetic brush and I'm just really sort of half closing my eyes just to see the sort of folds in the clothing and also the shadows of the dress. I've just added a little bit more blue here just to darken up some of those sort of folds and create some stronger sort of dark shadows there to really make some of that pop. So just here and there, as you know, when you've got a fold, there's a very much darker area and as the light hits it, it gets slightly lighter as well. I find it fascinating to paint folds in clothing. Um, I know the great, you know, the artists of many centuries before the 18th century, think about how they painted satins and silk and the folds. I find it fascinating. But when you actually go up close, it's completely abstract. Um, so that's a, such an amazing skill. I'm painting a little bit of blue on the outside of this hat. It's almost like a rain hat, isn't it, this? And uh, using a little bit of the buff titanium and white. Now, if you don't have buff titanium, it's absolutely fine. Just use white as a substitute. Um, and you can use a touch of yellow ochre. Um, that helps a little bit. So the buff titanium is slightly warmer than the titanium white. But as you saw there, I added a bit of white or light to that. And I'm just painting a little bit of um, red and violet and whatever I've got in the center there, actually. What's quite nice is when you're sort of mixing different colors together just to try and get those shade. But it's to get a bit of shadow here, but it's a bit of a warm sort of color here as well. So I don't want it too cool on this yellow hat. So I've smudged it there, as you saw, with my fingertips to blend but when you start painting because obviously I'm using a stay wet palette here and you've got all these different blends down it's what's really nice is you can sort of use those for other areas to create color harmony as well so I've used a bit of the buff to tame on the top of the hat there just to paint some of the light areas there and I'm also changing the shape of the hat slightly, making it a bit bigger than the hat the girl's wearing in the photograph, um, just because I thought it looked quite nice and um, just blending in a bit of warm colour here as well. And I really want, I love painting hats and things like this. You can really sort of bring them to life and I'm painting in lots of subtle tonal values here. <laughs> I've decided to add a little bit of a red band to her hat there 
which she has something similar in the photograph, making it a bit lighter on the left hand side with a bit of a deeper red on the right hand side, and even a little bow as well. Still using this very small round synthetic brush. And I'm going to start painting some shadows on this dress now um, using a little bit of the violet, touch of blue and a touch of the white as well. Maybe a even a little bit of um, the yellow mixed in there as well. But I am using that sort of central patch of colour and just picking sort of different colours. If it looks too violet, add a touch of yellow. If it looks too blue, add a tiny touch of red and you'll sort of get that sort of neutral colour. You don't want it too dark. Um, if it's looking too dark, just add a bit of white is what I'm doing here. And, you know, sometimes it's just a bit of trial and error. See what works on top of your sort of painting there. I'm using a bit of dry brush as well um, to create some texture and sort of painting quite fast so that my brush isn't fully loaded. So I'm just painting the shoes now. I've changed them from the trainers that the girls are wearing and I'm just using a little bit of black with a tiny touch of a lighter colour that I had mixed. So you could use a little bit of the buff titanium or even a touch of white. Um, so the left shoe is painted first. It's not too dark. I will add some more dark later. As you can see, I've added even a light pink there. And I'm just painting a quite sort of a lighter shade of almost like a grey on the sole of the shoe there. I'm doing the same on the girl on the right, on her left leg there. Just taking my time. And remember, if this does go a little bit awry, just sort of wet it with some water, wipe off and have another go. Um, don't let the acrylic dry. If you do let it dry and you don't like what you've done, just paint the path colour over the top and have another go. It's as simple as that. So try to just really sort of take your time. And if you want to, and you're using this photograph and you want to paint the trainers instead, just go for it as well. Um, I always think sometimes I like, I like my students to have freedom to sort of paint what they want to with me guiding them. So I'm just painting a light um, skin tone Tone here just where the lights hitting the back of the legs using a little bit of red and yellow with a touch of white um, a bit of buff titanium as well it's just to kind of get sort of a really sort of bright color so it's it's almost exaggerating things here <laughs> So I'm using some white titanium paint with my small round brush painting wet on dry some of the decoration, some of the pattern on the dress of the girl on the left here and just sort of, you know, sort of trying to vary the sort of pattern and just have fun with it.
brought that dress to life, hasn't it? I'm really pleased with that. So I'm just going to work a little bit with the dress on the right here, painting in some of the lighter colours, exaggerating them actually. It's a really bright sunny day. So I'm using white titanium with this small synthetic brush and just sort of painting quick brush strokes of white wet on dry onto the dress there around the shadow areas. I don't want to lose my shadow areas there, but it's fun to do this. And you can, as I say, you can really exaggerate the light. And I'm doing the same with the dress on the left hand side as well with the white titanium. And again, sort of exaggerating some of the folds in the dress and how the light sort of catches on the top of the folds. I thought it'd be quite nice to put some frilly socks. You can just put some straight socks in or you can just stick to what the photograph has on the top there. And it just sort of finishes off the shoes nicely at the back of the legs as well. And painting lots more white and light on the dress on the right hand side and also on the left hand side of the dress on the left as well to show where the light is coming from as well. <laughs> So I'm really finessing the hats here, just adding more light, doing the same with the yellow hat. I just I would I could spend hours painting. It's so much fun to do just looking at little subtle details. And, you know, sometimes you may have painted something and didn't like it and you just paint straight over the top. Keep readjustments. It's not like a painting by numbers as such. You're kind of changing things all of the time if you're not happy with it or you're just building up dark to light, etc. So I'm painting some dots now on the girl's dress on the right hand side using some blues, some sort of pinky sort of colour and some yellows as well. And it just looks really effective. Little patterns like this, details kind of bring the whole painting to life. And if you think right at the beginning, I just literally had a drawing on black canvas and then sort of sort of using the plastic bag to, you know, sort of print on all the texture for the um, bushes and trees and things. And now suddenly you're sort of homing in on details. And that's why I find it fascinating about painting so I'm using this little this brush is getting a good workout today but I'm just painting
painting on some highlights there with some white and now I'm painting in um, the hair um, over the top of the dress now everything's dried using the small round brush again um, mixed up I've not actually used any brown paint I've used violet red and yellow and you can sort of vary that to get different sort of shades of brown as well so it's really effective you can use blue as well and mix the blue into that as well to make the hair darker um, or if you want to use a bit of black or Payne's grey and which I'm doing now to paint sort of darks in the hair I'm using a little bit of white mixed with blue um, to create some light on the edge of the hat there I've decided to go with the black hair of the little girl on the right in the photograph as well but again if you want to change the color of the hair um, I did say to my students you could make these your grandchildren or children or you know you know uh, little girls that you may know or nieces or whoever <laughs> but um, it's quite nice because it's the back of them you can sort of uh, you know make them into people that you know so you can change the length of the hair the color of the hair whether it's curly or straight um, you could even give them sort of sort of pigtails or a ponytail so I quite like this because you can be really creative you can use the photograph as a reference and make it your own I thought I'd include this little bit in here. I'm using green in the background and just cropping in. I felt I made her hair far too wide and it made her head look quite big. In this instance now, just using the negative space, which is the green in the background here, um, it sort of makes her head look smaller. And that's what I love about acrylics. I'm sort of correcting what I've done there by just using the background paint here and doing the same on the right hand side and to the hat as well. Just finessing really and painting some light on top of the hair um, it's not necessarily a light color but it's lighter than the Payne's gray that I used earlier so I'm mixing up a shadow color here that's the violet touch of blue and a little bit of the yellow and so it's nice and dark but not sort of black too black there because it looks a bit flat and I'm just painting the cast shadow on the ground now I know my students did this and they left little gaps if you look at the photograph that shadow goes all the way across in between their sort of shoes there so really sort of block in that and what this does obviously besides it actually is in the photograph it really grounds these two girls and they really look like they're walking along on this really bright sunny day and it kind of finishes them off quite nicely and I'm just adding a few little highlights here and there on the edge of the shoe and everything to almost exaggerate the light um, to bring them to life. I'm using some cadmium yellow painting wet on dry just literally blobs yellow blobs with my little round brush here trying to vary the sizes as well. So if your yellow isn't working as well as this, sometimes it's because some student grade yellows are a little bit transparent. They don't have enough of the pigment there. What I would suggest if you can't get hold of an artist yellow, paint some white on first, then the yellow over the top and you'll find that should work nicely. So I'm painting some smaller dots in the distance and it's to create depth really. So the flowers in the distance will appear smaller and the ones in the foreground a bit bigger. I'm painting some more orangey flowers here as well. Now you can use whatever color you like. You could paint some red flowers in there or purple or violet flowers, you know, make it your own again, but keep it really simple. The painting's all about these two young girls walking along a country lane. I've added a little bit of violet to that sort of orangey color with a touch more red to sort of paint these sort of flowers in the foreground that are kind of in the shadows. If you're not comfortable with that, you can just carry on painting large, larger sort of orange colored flowers. But 
I thought it'd be quite nice to paint that in. I'm using a, a sort of my little thin brush again just to paint in some little twigs and details here between the flowers just to give a little bit of detail. I was tempted of using my plastic card and printing with that but I decided just to keep everything quite simple here not adding too much just to keep it sort of all about the girls still. So I'm watering down some of this cadmium yellow here and I'm using this little round brush and I'm spattering this yellow wet on dry um, just to create some more sort of textures and details there, a little bit of sparkle in my painting and it's also quite random. There's lots and lots of flowers there so I just wanted to give that illusion of lots and lots of flowers without having to sort of paint everything individually. I thought I'd revisit the hat of the girl on the left and I'm just painting a little bit more dark there using a little bit of the blue, the violet and the yellow blending. But you could use blue and brown if you want to do with a touch of white and just adding a little bit more white as well. It's always good just to go back and revisit things, just see if you need to do any more. And I'm just sort of painting in little highlights on the back of their hair, on the dress, etc. Um, especially after you've painted the background, sometimes you need to kind of go back and just check things. I'm just exaggerating the white and light of the dress on the left and actually making the sleeve, the puff sleeve on the left there, a little bit more puffed and bring it out a little bit more and make that adjustment as well. I'm just adding a few more lights on the little straw hat there and the hat, the yellow hat on the right there, again just to exaggerate the light so it looks like a bright sunny day with that strong shadow on the ground. I thought I'd added a little bit of white and yellow here and just painting some sort of random light areas in the foliage in the distance there sort of larger spots smaller spots it almost looks like the lights coming through those bushes and trees and what I'm doing now is I've watered down some of this white here and I'm just spattering the foreground there to create some texture and to create a little bit of light but also some depth as well so I think I'll leave the painting there for now. I'm really pleased with it. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's been a bit longer. I've included a lot more detail. So I hope you found that beneficial, my thought processes and how I change the photograph, etc. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and you will get updates of my latest tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.